This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys and seed. And by XMR.to. Anonymously exchange your Monero into Bitcoin and seamlessly send Monero to any Bitcoin address. Go to XMR.to or use it right in your Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet and XMR.to are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. In part one of a four part on our Capulco series, Douglas Tuman interviews Brock Pierce. Brock Pierce is a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and impact investor in the blockchain space. Douglas and Brock discussed the cryptocurrency space and, in particular, why community is such a critical component of the cryptocurrency story. Monero Talk starts now. All right, what's going on? We're in uh, Anarcho Poco, my first time here, and I'm with uh, none other than Brock Pierce. Brock, what's going on, man? My first time too, but uh, I mean, it's February. We're in Acapulco. I mean, look at this beautiful tree and background. And for those of you that can't feel it, the weather is perfect. (laughs) Yeah, it's beautiful. This is this this is the spot to have a a crypto conference at, no doubt. Um, So, so I I watched some of your talk. I wasn't able to watch all of it because I was around trying to arrange interviews with other people. Uh, But I think uh, uh, one of the big takeaways was talking about you were calling it the why. So kind of why are we here what's your purpose in life what are you up to what what are you really working on so what is what is your why what is uh kind of what's your purpose and, and drive well my my why is to do everything i can we're only on this planet for a short time and so i'm here to make the biggest positive impact i possibly can i measure my success in life by the positive impact and positive is open to interpretation, right? But that's how I measure my life. And so I have my gifts, my skills, right? My superpowers. I believe we all have the potential to be superheroes and I have the power of convening people. I can bring people together. It's a very useful skill to help um, allow others to connect the dots or to help facilitate the connecting of the dots. I also have the gift of storytelling. So I know how to tell a story, which um, is very useful when trying to deliver messages and allowing those messages to resonate with people and and a bunch of other things. But, you know, grateful to share what gifts I have with others. I live my life in service, doing all that I can. And so grateful to to be able to do this with a group of people that I have so much in common with, you know, free thinkers. Yeah, awesome. Um, So what would you say kind of the... You know, being a storyteller, what is what is the story of crypto? What is, I guess that's my second question. What is the, the purpose? Of, what do you see as being the purpose of crypto? What, How, how can the world uh, stand to benefit from crypto technology? Well, I, I think that this technology provides some of the fundamental building blocks to help create a better world. And it's not to say that the things of the past are wrong. They were done because of the system or the situation of the times and the tools that were had. I I try not to judge the past. I try to be in the present and help co-create a better future. And I think that these are fundamental tools. Um, Cryptocurrency in terms of its financial sort of freedom that it can enable uh, as an alternative system, a system that is built on math and a whole lot of other interesting things, um, a system built on truth. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's the technology that's going to enable the upgrading of, you know, the system, but then the onus is on us. It's just a tool and how those tools are used and for what purpose and with what intention is what matters. And so I, I take the work that I do in this space very seriously. I understand the potential impact it can have and the responsibility that that in, entails and the responsibility that we're entrusted with. Awesome. So I know you're cryptocurrency agnostic, right? I, I think you've defined yourself as that. But do you kind of have a paradigm through which you kind of view coins and 
I'm, I'm obvious, obviously, I'm sure there's certain coins that you think are superior to others in terms of uh, the technology they're providing and the use cases they can provide. So I know you're coin agnostic, but kind of which coins do you have a preference for in terms of you think are kind of set to change the world in the biggest way? Well, the, the main thing is not really the technology. You know, this is all built on open source. Meaning you can copy paste the technology. The technology only gives you a first mover advantage. And the best technology historically is I, I'm not sure if it's ever won. You know, the technology is not the primary differentiator. The main thing that separates those things that get adoption from those that don't are things like use cases, right? I focus on use cases, but more than anything, because this is open source, the community, the community development. You know, for a long time, I didn't think anything of Dogecoin. I kind of thought it was laughable. But that community sort of development with not very differentiated technology became a tour de force because of the power of community. And so I really try to look at the, call it the early stewards, the early leaders, the early builders, and I look at their ability to cultivate, right, to support, to aggregate community. And how those people, when confronted with opportunities to enrich themselves or enrich their community, which choice they make. And when I see really good community development and people that are trying to do things in the right way, serving those, you know, serving others, you know, those are the things that inspire me. And, and that's where I see a lot of potential. So it's really use case and community development is the main stuff I look at. And I know that I don't know what the future holds. I know that we're still early in this industry's development and its potential for impact. Right. We're just leaving the prototype sort of phase. And so I wouldn't want to lock myself into anything and prohibit myself from any potential future. You know, I view crypto maximalism as being very similar to religious fundamentalism. And with religions, at least we have thousands of years of data to operate from, you know, to to lock yourself into a single potential future or a single technology this early Seems like a bad idea. And especially if you do that in a super vocal way, if you end up being wrong, you may find yourself a little bit alienated. And so I think it's important that you continue to maintain branches or bridges and continue to understand other people's perspectives. Why do they think this matters? And keep an open mind, you know, and an open heart. Um, I believe if anyone makes the world a better place, we all win. And I don't think the future is limited to a single technology. You know, I think that certain cryptos or blockchains are better suited for certain use cases than others. So I also see a world where there can be multiple winners. And so um, I encourage everyone to keep an open mind, study the community, how that community develops, the use cases, the integrity of the people, you know, that are stewarding that community's development and, uh, you know, be supportive of each other, you know, uh, less stones, you know, more hands. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's sharing. It's all open source. So whatever I do, you can learn from. Whatever you do, I can learn from. And so together we're better. Very awesome. So, I mean, obviously this is the Monero talk show, um, but I would not define myself as a Monero maximalist. Uh, on this show, we like to uh, convey the message of digital cash maximalism. So I'm a believer in digital cash and trying to find the project that i believe is doing that in the best way. I currently think that's Monero. I try to say I keep an open mind and I'm constantly searching for one that may or may not end up doing that better. Uh, but what is your take on that? Do you are, do you, are you a believer in this value proposition of digital cash that there should be a cryptocurrency that's really uh, just honing in on that concept and really trying to be digital cash? And of those, which one is your favorite digital cash? So I'm going to narrow it down further into one category of digital cash, and that is the ones that have a strong emphasis on privacy features. Like when you think about the history of security, security and privacy are very interlinked. You know, having the freedom to keep information about yourself private, I think is, is, is rather important. And it's certainly a big thing that I think about in the context of blockchain and transparent transactions. I see a lot of benefit to a very transparent world, but I also see some risks associated with a very transparent world, depending upon the state of consciousness and the rest of humanity. 
And so I, I still think that privacy has a very important role to play. And so I think that this entire um, sh- offshoot of cryptocurrencies are an incredible element for this overall ecosystem's development. And I'm glad to see Monero and all of the others that are focused on protecting our privacy, doing the work that you're doing. Keep up the great work. Uh, we need it now. And again, the future, I don't know. But in the world we live in today, privacy is essential. That we might get to a point where human consciousness upgrades to a point where we can live in a world of complete transparency because we've all upgraded. But as long as there are people with guns trying to take away our freedoms, we still have to protect ourselves. And I think Monero is one of the solutions of providing us with the protections that we need in the world that we currently live in. Um, Hopefully humanity upgrades to a point one day where maybe we don't need that, but that ain't yet. That ain't now. So this is very relevant and I am a big fan of Monero and all of the others that are focused on privacy related tools because we need them today. Now, obviously, uh, you know, big believer in privacy as well. Um, but I also see it as not necessarily privacy, uh, but fungibility, right? Mm-hmm. Fungibility, privacy being a product of, of fungibility or vice versa, no matter, depending on how you want to look at it. Do you think money, digital money, at, in its essence, needs to be fungible? So ignoring the concept, privacy is great that for all the reasons where, you, know, you were just talking about. Um, but in terms of a, a just technologically speaking, does does money need to be fungible? And we've seen, especially recently, uh, that Bitcoin has proven not to be fungible, in, in my opinion. I don't know if you, if you differ there, uh, but with things like blacklisting and the fact that uh, in order to properly use Bitcoin, you have to use third party mixers to kind of turn it into a fungible currency. What is your take there? So ignoring privacy, that privacy is a nice thing to have. Do you think it's essential for a cryptocurrency, a digital a, a digital dollar, uh, a digital coin that's trying to be digital cash to have fungibility built into it? Yeah, I think fungibility is a critical component of money, but it's, it's all a scale. It's all a trade-off. How much of this do you want or how much of that? And I think that fungibility is proving to be, in this case, and driven by privacy, uh, important. Because we're watching things like Bitcoin being impacted by, call it that, lack of privacy, which in some ways makes it less fungible. And so that's one of the reasons why I think this is important. No question. And so, um, yeah, in a world where the chain is being analyzed and transactions are being analyzed and money is being blacklisted, and money is being whitelisted. And what does whitelisted mean? Do you want whitelisted money? <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a whole rabbit hole that I encourage everyone to go down. But do you see that as a problem? This, this blacklisting, whitelisting? I mean, is that something that we should strive to eliminate through uh, building better cryptocurrency? Yes, I'm not sure we need to strive to eliminate it because I think that we want all the choices, right? We need to experiment with all the things. But I think that we have to have experimentations of this technology that are focused on maximizing fungibility. Maximizing fungibility might be very important. And therefore, in this future that hasn't completely unfolded yet, that has to be one of the options at the table. And I'm grateful to those people that are building systems with privacy that deliver greater fungibility. Because without that option, we are shortchanging ourselves. Awesome, man. Uh, I guess final question, Puerto Rico, I know you live down there. Uh, you're kind of the, the head honcho down there in terms of the crypto scene, which I guess isn't a very decentralized thing to say, but that you are you are the face of crypto Puerto Rico. Is that is that fair to say? I mean, in the minds of some, you know, but it, it, there's many of us, right? I'm just one person. I just happen to be higher profile than most. And I, I do think there's a role for people getting in front of the camera. You know, for people getting on top of the stage, for people to be, you know, in the media, in the medium, you know, that message needs to get out without people talking about Monero and people being aware of Monero and its use cases and its benefits and how it's differentiated. It's hard for Monero to succeed. Not everyone is going to go into, you know, anonymous forums to get their information. The world is not at that stage. And so it needs those of us that venture out 
and take the risk. It comes at great personal risk. You know, having these conversations, you are, you know, as they say, the nail that stands up is the one that gets pounded down or the whale that breaches for air is the one that gets harpooned. We take risk in doing this work. And I encourage people to stay invisible or less visible unless you are consciously making that choice because there are some benefits, but a lot of risk associated with it. And so um, it's one of the things I have volunteered to do to take on a, a role that includes some more visibility and it comes at a price but I, I'm happy to do my part for this overall community and you know I pay that price and I try to thread the needle as carefully as I can and I'm I'm still standing yeah no thank you for all your hard work somebody needs to do it uh, I personally don't own any Monero so it doesn't you know I'm just out here talking about Monero well if, you, but, if you're going to be a public figure <laughs> the less actual work you do in this space the better off you are when you but, do both, you're, then you, you've got vulnerabilities. You've got places that you are vulnerable to attack. If you are just sharing the word and sharing the message, you know, your, your, your threat vector is a lot smaller. Uh, well, I guess what I wanted to ask you then about Puerto Rico, is there a Monero scene in, in crypto uh, Puerto Rico? Yeah, there's no, I, I lot Monero is constantly in conversation there are a lot of monero uh supporters present it's talked about regularly at events like crypto monday i mean monero is i'd say one of the core pillars you know call it privacy and fungibility pillars of this overall ecosystem so if you are call it a core pillar it should always be part of the conversation you know if it's not something that you are familiar with even if you don't think it's a good thing right or for some reason you don't think it's relevant I would say that studying this is something we should all do in our open-minded um, mentality uh, uh, and really, you know, understand what the benefits are and why it matters. You know, like, it's the same conversation. A lot of people are like, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you need privacy? Those are fundamental rights and it's a very slippery slope. And so it, it's whether you feel you need it, it's very important and something we should all understand the history of why privacy matters. Like, go back in time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so last question. Thank you again for, for taking the time. Um, is there any, any advice you would give to, because you obviously talked about community being very important, any advice you'd give to the Monero community on things maybe they could be doing better or just advice in general on what the project uh, could maybe be trying to focus on to, to improve? Yeah, that if something's changed in the last few months, uh, I'm not on top of everything. There's too much happening in this space to be aware of everything. But the main complaint I would have historically had with Monero was, and I think that's changed now already. So I, I'm, I'm probably speaking in, in a past user interface, wallets, things of that nature. I think what Monero is building as a community is very important to the overall ecosystem but you have to make things accessible to the masses. And so the thing that I've always seen in my evaluations of Monero is tool sets, uh, wallet interfaces and things of that nature that make it easy to use. But you now have enough wallets out there that I, I think that this problem's probably been solved. It wasn't really solved by the Monero community as far as I can tell. It was solved by the people that are building multi-coin sort of wallet no 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 it's it's come a long way there's there's monero only wallets open source uh cake wallet for example yeah. on iphone android uh so you know it's come a very long way in those, those terms that's really it i mean as a as a digital currency right that's fungible very fungible call it on a scale of one to ten you know a pro, you know aspiring to be a 10 at least in the category of fungibility i mean those are really the things with digital cash probably more payment systems, right? If you're, if you're aspiring, to, aspiring to be digital cash, more integrations with the uh, payment processing infrastructure. Because if you want to be a digital cash, you want to have more places where people can spend it. So uh, I think that that's an area of focus because you don't have to do everything. You know, what are the things that if your focus is in being digital cash that moves the needle most? And so wallet, the ability to send receive with ease and with security, that's there. More places you can spend it having tens or hundreds or thousands or millions of merchants 
is probably a useful thing. Uh, and then uh, adoption, right? And this is the type of work you're doing right here, getting the message out, creating awareness. And I think another key component is how you present privacy, like, like we've had here in the role of fungibility. As an industry, we're often misunderstood because people fear that which they don't understand. And the way that you conquer fear is with information and knowledge. You don't want people saying, oh, they want privacy to be able to buy and sell drugs online. Because that's not the, that's not it. Yeah, right? that's it's, not to, pr- the it's preserve liberty, yeah, you know, preserve, preserve liberty. open society. But if you don't communicate that message effectively, that's the story that gets told. And so you have to be very effective in telling your story, explaining your purpose, explaining your why you exist. And it's preservation of liberty. Because if you don't tell that story effectively, someone else will tell the story for you. And that's largely the media. And they're going to sensationalize a small piece of what something might be used for, like every other form of digital money or money itself, right? There's always going to be use cases for that, that are things that are easy to vilify or demonize. And so the reason why you need people to tell this story and tell that message is to make sure that your purpose and your true mission is what people hear. Awesome. Thanks again, man. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, hope to see you in Puerto Rico one of these days. Yes, please. And uh, and again, this is an invitation to the entire Monero community. Love the work that you're doing here to support you in the ways that I can. And if you want to come down to Puerto Rico, I'm happy to help facilitate, you know, all the adventures and things. Uh, and if you're a U.S. citizen, there's a lot of compelling reasons to be there. Awesome. Thanks again, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much and we look forward to being back next week.